If you're interested in building guitars or kits with relatively simple tools and techniques, stay with me. I'll be continuing my original designed guitar for the Great Guitar Build-Off unofficial competition. I'll be going step by step and showing methods even first time guitar builders should be able to follow. So stick around, let's build a guitar. Hi, I'm Yoav and this is the Electric Luthier. Today, we'll continue in the fourth part of my take on the great guitar build-off. Who said nothing good happened in 2020? While the neck is glued and drying, I want to go back to the body and make good use of what we have learned from the prototype. This time, with my Iroko butcher block and the original template. I first try and just find a position where the best looking strips are and try to avoid connections in places where it may be too visually distracting or may be problematic construction wise. I like the darker strips and they also seem to have shorter grain. I draw the shape from the original template and add the pickup positions and the neck pocket for reference. The shape from the prototype was a bit small in both the controller area and for the monkey grip. So I try and expand those parts while staying with the same general shape. Once I'm happy with it, I whip out the jigsaw and start cutting the outline. It's pretty straightforward and I try and leave enough room around the line. Since I know there will be a lot of carving and sanding afterwards, I'm not too concerned about accuracy. When I take it to the sanding disc, I just want to get the overall shape kind of smooth. And then a little touch at the spindle for those inner curves as well, just to even things out. The body shape is done and you can see the small and significant changes from the original design and template. Now before starting to carve, there are a few things easier done on flat surface. I'll start with the monkey grip. I'm trying to make it slightly larger than before for comfort. Now funny thing, while cutting with the jigsaw, I noticed how comfortable the handle was. So I'll try to mimic the thickness to the jigsaw. I'll mark it, then drill and cut it. Before getting to the templates and routing, I'll also mark the general areas where I want the main carving to begin. Now I'll also need to redesign the control cavity. The shape is not exactly the most original, but I didn't get a kit, so I have to make it. If you're making a template for this type of cavity, you actually need three separate templates. The first is the actual hole you'll route out the full depth of the cavity. The second is just to create the outline and the ledge the cover will sit on. And the third to show the position for all the drilling and the cover itself. I'll get into how exactly they work in a bit. I wasn't too happy with the prototype template and I also noticed that my shortest bit is a bit too long than I need. But if I use a thicker template, I'll have a bit more playroom with the depth of the router. So I'll copy the parts I like and redo the neck pocket for the new template. I'll be using an 18 millimeter, which is almost three quarters an inch of laminated MDF. And I'll first drill out most of the material. For the cavity, I'm pre-drilling just one hole for the jigsaw to get started in. I use my short 3 quarter inch flush trim bit to start routing the pickups. The blade is just a hair longer than the actual thickness of the MDF and I notice that my fancy $40 trimmer is not maintaining the height and the blade sinks down every little bit. This results in the top laminate not getting routed 
and, and me getting really frustrated. Oh well, I'll just switch to a way too long blade and do it properly. I'll be using the bigger router for the actual route, but I like the trimmer for the templates. That's what you get when you buy cheap tools. If you're trying to route tight holes for the pickups, another little issue you may run into is that the corner radius of the router bit is much bigger than the pickup itself. So I switch to a 6mm or quarter inch straight carpet bit to carefully tighten those corners. These have no bearings, so although the shaft does work as a stop, I can still do some damage. So I try and do this really carefully. It's time for the neck pocket, which I'll redo using a neck as a template for the template. Preferably, this should be done with the actual neck I'm going to use, but it's still clamped, so I measure it twice to make sure it's not smaller than this one. I first use one piece of MDF as a stop for the length part of the heel and double tape it or masking tape super glue it. This piece needs to be less wide than the neck itself. Now I align the neck to the center line, clamp it off camera in the other end so it doesn't move and attach two more pieces to the sides of the neck. For extra measure and tightness, you can add a layer or two or more of masking tape to the edge to push the router a bit further. Then I route it. Notice that the trimmer base is smaller than the width of the pocket and if you don't hold it in an angle, I may dip a little and create a gash in my template, which I somehow managed to do. I'm not really worried because that area in the pocket is going to be cut out anyway. Moving to the cavity template, I use the same template for one of the templates and because it's supposed to be for the back, I flip it. God knows why, I, I can just flip the template. Anyway, I cut it as tight as I can and file it smooth. For the inner part, I need an extra piece. Anyone recognize the strat cavity here? I cut this one too and file it smooth. For the cover piece, I spray glue the paper to the scrap piece of MDF and then I cut it to shape and sand it. That's it for the templates and I'm ready for the main event. If you're interested in guitar building and like this, don't be shy. Hit the subscribe button below and top it off with a little bell and you'll get notified when my next video comes out. I also welcome you to my website theelectricluthier.com with much more theory and articles on the subject. I align my template to the body and the center line. You know what I like more than double tape or masking tape and super glue? Clamps, clean and simple. Your template just needs to be big enough so they don't get in the way. I'm going to start drilling out material with my 25 millimeter, roughly one inch Forstner bit. I set the stop to taking into account the thickness of the templates and leaving a bit at the bottom for the router to clean the holes from the tip of the drill. Do make sure the depth also works for the neck pocket. The pickups are often deeper. I want to route the depth in three stages, going about a third of the depth each stage. I'll be using the straight bit for the first two stages while adjusting the height and using the thickness of the template to start high and making the bit kind of shorter. For the third stage, I'll remove the template and I'll be using the round end bit with the bearing and writing on the previous route. 
I then check the fit of the pickups and see that the corners are a bit problematic, so I'll have to touch them up. I also need to put the template back on for the final neck pocket route just to make up for the length of the bit I have. I have a shorter one, but it has a larger diameter and doesn't fit the radius of the planned heel of the neck corners. Putting the template back on and getting it to perfectly align is tricky, so I add some masking tape to the edge of the pocket for safety. I'd rather sand it later than have a loose neck. The pickup cavities get the deserved touch-up with a straight 6mm or quarter inch bit. This is all manual, so I really try and not cause any damage. This will be covered, but still. And last but not least is my control cavity. Masking tape super glue the template in place. This one is the deeper one, and I do first a shallow pass. After that, I remove the template and calculate the thickness of the body minus the length of the pot's shaft minus a few more millimeters I may remove carving the top. I use the same blade for the depth. I think in this case, the straight corners will work better when I try and glue the copper tape to them. So I'm not going to be using the round bit. I think we're just about ready for carving. Join me on the next part of the Great Guitar unofficial build-off build. As always, I'll be linking all the tools and accessories I'm using or equivalents in the description below for your convenience. Some of these are affiliate links, so if you do end up buying through my link, I'll be getting a small commission at no extra cost for you. And that will make me happy and motivate me to keep doing these videos. Until then, if you'd like more information on guitar building, please subscribe below and don't forget the little bell to get notified when my next video comes out. And definitely check out theelectricluthier.com with dozens of articles I've written about guitar building. What else? But don't just read it. Go build a guitar!